Um, hi, this is Gunnar Küpper at the Fraser Park Library. I'm with Julian Wilson. Julian Wilson today on April the 25th just uh, presented a film that he has produced about uh, a uh, veteran who was in World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam War and served for 30 years in the US Army. Julian, tell me a little bit about yourself and your project and how did you come to this project? Okay. Well, I'm a native of Los Angeles, California. Uh, I actually went to college in uh, Fresno, California, Fresno State, and uh, at a California State University Bakersfield, CSUB, right here in the area. Um, I came about this particular uh, film project that I, that I did, uh, I was doing some work at Indiana University and it just so happened I was walking around in a mall one day and uh, I see this guy walking with a cane through the uh, hallway and I see his hat and I look at his hat and I see all this service, you know, for having been in wars. But I saw two wars, but I said, what's all the other stuff? When I got closer to him, it was three wars that he was in and so then I didn't believe it because you just don't see that every day. Somebody fought in three major wars. So I took the occasion to stop him and ask him, I said, hey, uh, did you fight in all three of those wars? And he said, yes, I did. And the rest is history. I actually went to his home, uh, did an interview with him, and then I did a whole nother year of just research. And the one thing I could not believe about this subject, whose name is Mr. Uh, Gene T. Ship, like I said, served in the Army, um, who's 96 years old now. I could not believe how sharp he was. He was so incredibly sharp. Everything that I went to research was right there, just as he laid it out, just as he said it. And then, of course, the associated photographs that he had. Um, incredible. I was blown away. I initially made the film just to share with his family. But once I completed the film and I saw the content there, I knew that not only did I not know about the things he discussed in history, there are a lot of other people that don't know. I need to share this with everyone else. And so that's how this became to where I was in here in Fresh Park today. Very good. Julian, your, your personal background, are you a filmmaker? Are you, what is your background in regards to doing films? Well, I studied uh, criminal justice in college, uh, got that degree, uh, and I went back and studied fine art. That's where my filmmaking comes from because what I did was I combined writing with my art. And I figured out a way that I could take the both, meld them together, and then presenting to people. I said, how can I take this art and this writing and present it and share it with people? And that's how I got into filmmaking. I had no formal training in filmmaking. All, all self-taught. Uh, I would work in studios in Los Angeles where I'd you know, be a production assistant, you know, what have you, so I could be around and see how it worked. And that's how I learned, by, I guess, osmosis. Yeah, I can fully understand that. I must say I was pretty impressed by your little film, 20, 30 minutes, and particularly also the appearance of uh, Gene T. Ship. Ship. And uh, I even wrote down two quotes which I found uh, totally amazing for this 96-year-old uh, person that, you know, went to um, three wars and was born in what, 19... 1919. In 1919, just after the end of World War I. Um, two of the quotes I just want to bring up because they appeared so uh, impressive to me. One was, peace is a great word as far as I'm concerned and hate will get you in trouble. I thought this is such a great message. Um, but let me go into another. I, I understand where you're coming from, how you initiated this uh, film. This is only a 20 minute film. How do you make any kind of money or where do you get financial support for this really great project? Well, uh, this particular project, again, this was self-financed uh, and a lot of it was because of time constraints. I could have put together a package for this particular film when I was solicited financing, but I had to look at the circumstance I was dealing with. I was dealing with a man who was elderly 
Um, and I didn't want to take it for granted that I'd take a year and raise some money and that he would still be able, health-wise or whatever. Uh, and so as soon as I met him, I just decided this is what I'm going to have to do uh, and get this story. Um, so making money on this particular film was never uh, the agenda, so to speak. Uh, this was just about capturing the story. And from there, what I learned about myself was that, you know what, I can do things like this without having this, this, and that. And a lot of times you're, you know, you're primed and taught that, you know, how are you going to do that without this, this, and that? There's a way. There's always a way to get something done. And this film is a perfect example. And that is really an, an exceptional film. You showed it here for the second time. How often have you showed the film? I know it was here in Fraser Park, very well received by many of the veterans that were here, and many are also in you know high age in the the eighties. Um, so, what? How many you know film screenings did you have so far? What was your experience in you know exchanging? your experiences with the audience, and what is the next step to this particular particular film? Okay, um, This film has screened uh, upwards of at least 10 times. I do believe it's more, but I don't want to exaggerate that number. I know for sure at least 10 times. Uh, it screened four times uh, in Indiana, which is his home state, uh, and well received. He's actually a celebrity in Indiana. They know him. It's the Gene T. Ship story. Uh, and that's what I want. I really wanted to go well in his home state. Uh, the film's also been screened uh, at CSUB uh, in Bakersfield. It's been screened in Las Vegas at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, and it's been screened twice in the city of Bakersfield, uh, once at the Kern County Library and <clears throat> again at a local church mm -hmm. in town. So. And what is, do you have plans or next steps for this particular film? Yeah, my next step with this particular film is to continue along the process that I've chosen to take this film, which is continue to have these small uh, screenings uh, coupled with discussions, because this is what I'm finding is where the growth takes place, where, where people are able to actually make a connection. It's difficult sometimes with content like this to watch it and really take it in when you can't ask questions, you know? And so, and that's what I've found uh, in some of my experience in film, when you got content like this, people need to be able to make a deeper connection with that content, and it helps when they're able to ask questions, and when they're able to ask questions of the filmmaker. 